So a friend of mine, well, somebody I know, started to develop this amazing program, a web application, a crazy web app, a start for a new startup, and then, well, this happened. Out of memory error, unable to create a new native thread. Okay, but it, this is not the, the only flavor. We have the Stack Overflow, we have Permgen, uh, Metaspace, uh, Heap, uh, Overhead, well, I can continue, okay? So if you search for out of memory error on Google, you have like 400,000 results. <laughs> I mean, if it's one of these entries in Google, it's just one person, it's around this many people. It's the whole uh, mall of the Washington DC filled with people. Every one of them has a memory error, okay? So, okay, what's the solution for this kind of, of problem? Obviously, you look in a Stack Overflow, you find the error you're dealing with, you, there is a line, you don't, under, don't understand, but who cares? No, no problem. So then, this is too slow, there are a lot of problems, the garbage collector doesn't work. Okay, every, I mean, the trolls attack, and it's normal, because we don't understand these kind of things. We read this kind of article, this is from InfoQ, blah, 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 I don't understand anything. It's more, <laughs> you see, something around. Yeah. Okay, you are with this space, and of course, you just start. Garbage collection. Why they fail? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so well, I introduce myself. My name is Alonso Torres. Um, I work for Paleidos, a Madrid based company. For, uh, we do mostly web development and custom software development. Uh, and I'm not really an expert in, in performance for the JVM, but I've been working for more than 10 years in the JVM. I've been fighting this kind of issues. And um, yeah, I thought that this would be a nice talk for everyone that is beginning and well a lot of you are have a lot more experience than me and, but I think some of these things maybe you don't know. So without further ado I'm going to well sorry uh, this is the agenda for the, the talk. I'm going to talk about the structure in the JVM's memory uh, concepts about Ratchet collection uh, the four types of uh, the collectors in the Oracle hotspot, Open, hot, open JDK hotspot, and configuration so you can tune the, the garbage collection. Okay. So the JVM. This is what the uh, JVM's memory looks like. We have four areas. Okay. So the first one is the JVM's memory. This is the memory that the JVM used for its things. It's not, uh, it's not used for, for, for our programs, okay? It's for the JVM. And then we have the stack. I'm going very quick uh, in this part because uh, most of my talk is going to talk about the heap. Okay, the stack. The stack is the execution uh, memory. Uh, the only thing you have to care about the stack is that uh, if it fails, most of the time it's because of you. <laughs> I mean, you, you can go 20,000 calls deep into the stack before it crash. So if you are that deep, maybe it's because <laughs> you, you have a mistake. And well, who hasn't, no? I mean, it's very normal. So it's per thread. This is another important thing. If you have uh, a lot of threads, uh, you have a lot of stacks. Uh, it's not a big concern, but there is. And of course, it's the cause of the famous Stack Overflow problem. Uh, okay, the GPM memory, the stack, and the perm, perm space and meta space. This uh, was a big uh, cause of problems in the past because uh, before Java 7, uh, the perm gen was inside the heap. Uh, the perm gen stores information about classes and uh, internalized strings. So for some instances, if you have a lot of classes and some big projects has this problem, I remember a, a JBoss project we, I work on, uh, we had this problem a lot. The first thing you have to do is to touch 
the, the size of the perm gem before doing anything else because otherwise it will crash. But in Java 8, they remove the, the perm gem from, from the heap and they put it outside the memory, in, in the native memory. So now, hopefully, you will not see more perm, error, perm gem errors. Okay, this is just an introduction because what I want to talk about is the heap. Because this, this is the, the core of the, all the programs. Here in the heap, the JVM stores all the dyna dynamic, dynamic data. Of course, this is the data of, of your objects. And it's the one that has the famous garbage collector. How, how does this work? It's quite easy, really. I mean, there is use memory and free memory. And when you advance, when you, your program runs, it fails. <laughs> so now you have two options. You can grow the heap, make it bigger, or you can free memory. Of course, very easy. <laughs> so how do you free the memory? Obviously, with the garbage collection. The first thing that does is search for the live objects. This is very important because uh, taking into account that if you have a lot of uh, garbage but very few alive objects, the garbage collection is going to be very efficient. I mean, it's <coughs> linear in order with the alive objects, not with the dead objects. Then, when has the, the garbage collection has found all the alive objects, freeze, removes everything else, and it has to reallocate the memory for the alive objects. Cool. So there are four, uh, four garbage collectors in the JDK. But before I talk uh, about them, I need to talk about general concepts. Okay? So you can understand me because otherwise I will talk a lot and I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, the first thing is the weak gener generational hypothesis. It's cool. It's quite obvious. It's an observation they did that most of the programs, uh, most of the objects inside a object-oriented language uh, are short usage. They are very short-lived. And all objects usually don't reference the young objects. I mean, there are a lot of uh, very short-lived objects um, and very few old objects. Um, they don't usually refer to one another. <coughs> so, in based on, uh, to this uh, hypothesis, they define what is called a generational GC. It only divides the, the garbage collection into parts, a uh, young collection and a, an old collection. This is a graph to understand it better. Uh, it's um, I mean, the, the average of the age at which uh, the objects the, die. So as you can see, uh, most of the objects die a very, a very young age. Um, so we can separate these two. Every uh, garbage collection is generational. It, it's not only in the JVM. I mean, Python and Ruby, I think, they, they have also uh, generational uh, garbage collectors. Okay, very easy. The only thing is that the young generation is so effective, I mean, it's so quick, that we don't want only one chance for the young objects to be collected. So we s separate, again, the young, the young uh, collection in two parts, the hidden and the survivors, okay? This is just to give another chance to the objects to uh, be collected in a young collection because it's much more efficient. So, okay, now my program executes and the jump generation fails. We need to do a, a, jump, a jump collection. Part of the object, objects goes to the survivors and other part goes to the old generation. Now, the program continues working and eventually I have everything filled. The young, the survivors, and the old collection. Everything is filled. So we need to do a full collection. Okay? Now we only 
have, uh, well, we, we empty everything, we uh, free the memory, and only alive objects are there. Okay, that's the first concept, the generation, generational GC. Now, I'm going to talk about some characteristics of the garbage collection. Garbage collection can be do done uh, concurrent, parallel, incremental, stop the world, serial, and monolithic. Don't worry, I've been very quick, but I'm going deeply into this. They go in pairs, okay? So you have concurrent and stop the world as, as, do oppos as opposite concepts, parallel and serial, uh, incremental and monolithic, and monolithic. Okay, so first thing, stop the world. I think this is the most famous thing about the garbage collection is that it stops everything. So when you are doing garbage collection, collection, you are not doing anything else. This is not always true because as we are going to see, there are some uh, things that we can do concurrently. So, for example, if we have uh, our program is running, there is a stop the world. Uh, garbage collection, so we stop everything, execute the garbage collection, and then our program continues. Very straightforward. On the other hand, it can be concurrent, so the garbage collection is executed at the same time as the, our, your program. Okay, now a garbage collection can be done in parallel. So it's only means that it's more than one thread. It's several threads. On the opposite, it can be serial. So, for example, this could be a parallel garbage collection. This would be a, a serial uh, garbage collection. Very easy. And incremental. Okay. Things maybe seems complicated, but it only means that it's done in several phases. Instead of in uh, doing everything in one go, you have several steps that you are doing uh, one after the other. So on the other hand, we have a monolithic <coughs> approach that everything is done in one go. So the same as before. Well, the, the nice thing about incremental is that uh, it doesn't mean that it's always the same. It means it's several steps, but it can be uh, several types of garbage collection each step. For, so for example, here in the example I have an incremental that first is concurrent, then it has a stop the world phase, then uh, there is no garbage collection in this phase, another stop the world, but this time is serial. Okay, so I have a garbage collection done in three steps, and each one is different. On the other hand, we, it can be monolithic. So these are the six characteristics that you need to remember to understand afterwards the, the, the garbage collection. Uh, one thing I want to remark is that there is a, in computer science, this, there is a continuous discussion about parallel versus concurrent. Sometimes it, those both terms are, are, are confused, but I think uh, garbage collection is very nice to, to understand these, these two concepts. This is the difference. Parallel just means several threads. Concurrent means that you are doing something at the same time that you are doing, doing another thing. So you have a parallel uh, garbage collection and a concurrent part of garbage collection. Okay? Last thing before <laughs> talking about the garbage collectors is latency, latency and throughput. I mean, maybe uh, you know what what, what uh, latency and throughput means, but I want to uh, let it very clear in this in, the, in this context what it means because uh, maybe it's a bit different. Okay, so latency. Uh, I'm going to refer to the maximum time the your program is stopped with doing anything else than GC. Okay, and throughput is the percentage of work you are doing. Okay, so it's the percentage dedicated to other things that it's not the GC. So for example, I have uh, <coughs> this garbage collection, so it's 15 seconds, and then I stop the world 5 seconds, and then 
50 seconds uh, your program, okay? The, the blue parts are your program and the orange part uh, uh, is the garbage collection. So we have a latency of 5 seconds because it's the only, it's the only stop the world that there is. And a throughput, well, trust me in my math, I, I suppose it's okay, but it's 90%. It's just, what's the percentage of blue? <laughs> okay. Now I can start talking about the, the four garbage collections you, you can choose when you are running uh, your programs. Uh, for, uh, just uh, for curiosity, how many of you know which garbage collector, collector are you using? Please raise your hand. Very few. So I can tell you that if you are using Windows, you are using this one. If you are using Linux or Mac, you are using this one. And if you are using JDK 8. If you are, when you are start using JDK 9, you are going to start. Oh, sorry. Uh, what is it? Okay. So you are going to start using the G1. But I'm going to explain it all. So the first one is the serial uh, garbage collector. It's uh, serial, monolithic, stop the war, and uh, it has two algorithms. Uh, one for the young generation, generation and one for the old generation. So for the young generation it uses uh, a copying uh, algorithm and for the old generation Mark Sweep Compact. This looks like this. Okay? It's, I think it's much uh, nicer this way <laughs> to understand this, this kind of stuff. Okay, what does copying? Uh, copying is just taking a stuff from here Put it on here. It's really simple. It just copies everything, moves everything from one side of the garbage collection to the other, and uh, it makes sure that it's everything together. And on the other, for the old generation, we do mark, sweep, and compact. So first we mark the alive objects, we sweep, and compact. I mean, it's there is no magic here, really. It's just uh, very normal concepts. <laughs> okay, the parallel collector. It's just like the serial, uh, uh, the serial collector, but done in parallel. It, everything is the same. The, the copying algorithm for the young generation, the uh, mark suite compact for the old generation. The only difference is that it's done in parallel. So it looks like this. So, you have to know that the parallel collector, and this is why it's the default in, in, in Linux and Mac OS, in Windows is the serial, I don't know why, <laughs> but it maxim. well, I, I know why, it's because uh, I suppose they don't want to, uh, I mean, the parallel and the, and the serial maximize throughput. I mean, maximize the, perfect, the percentage of useful, useful work that your program are doing, okay? The only difference is that one is done in parallel and the other in serial. So uh, maybe Windows they decided they prefer to do it every the garbage collection in a single thread for any reason. But yeah, this is the most uh, throp, uh, throughput wise the most efficient one of the four. But then we have the CMS. Okay. So if if they have a garbage collection and they made it another one, it's because they, they have a problem. What was the problem? The problem was that uh, the stop the work process uh, were very painful. I mean, uh, you have a very high latency. You have very good throughput, but very high latency. This, these two terms are usually uh, a trade-off. You have to uh, have one or the other. It's very hard to ha find a good balance between them. So, how is the CMS? So, for the young generation, it's just the same as the, the, other, uh, the other garbage collector. It's parallel, monolithic, stop the wall, and a copying algorithm. But, for the old generation, it's, uh, it's not monolithic, it's incremental. And I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, so first, we'll uh, mark uh, all the objects that uh, need to keep alive. Then, you, as you can see, it will work 
uh, along with the program and keep track of the new objects that they are incoming. Finally, there is a stop the wall with a final remark. <laughs> At this point, uh, the garbage collector now know what it has to remove. And finally, it removes the, the garbage concurrent with your program. So you are working just fine, but one of the threads is dedicated to erase, erase the garbage. Very nice. <laughs> so yeah, CMS tries to minimize latency instead of throughput. As you can see here, I try to put it in a graphical way how uh, on the right side you have the parallel uh, garbage collector. It has a very high uh, latency but very nice throughput while the other one has much uh, smaller uh, latency but worse throughput. Okay, the main problem with uh, CMS is that it doesn't compact. So, I, uh, no, sorry. Okay, so after several old generation collections, your memory looks a bit like a Gruyere. Huh? <laughs> it's, it's full of holes. And when there is excessive fragmentation, it needs to fall back to a stop the wall, <laughs> monolithic, serial, uh, mark sweep compact. So again, it's what, what uh, it's called a full GC. It's when you don't have anything else, you need to compact, well, you stop everything and just uh, do the, the quick thing, the, the smaller thing. So, to resolve this problem, to solve this problem, uh, the guys of the JVM uh, came up with the G1 uh, garbage collector. Collector. It's G1 because it's garbage first. So, what's the objective of G1? It's just to delay as much as possible a full GC. Uh, it tries, as the, uh, as the matrix compact, it tries to reduce the, the latency. And another two co very important concepts that we are going to see afterwards when we talk about option uh, of the JDM is that it's nice, for, it's predictable, and it's easy, easy to use. Okay? <laughs> well, that, that one. That final one, I think they, they couldn't make it, so yeah. <laughs> but what's the intention, okay? <laughs> okay, so the, uh, G1, how, how does it work? It divides the heap in regions, okay? Uh, depends on the heap size. Freeze first the regions with more garbage, because it's garbage first. <laughs> And the important thing is that compact. Compact while it's moving the garbage, the, sorry, the alive objects. This is the main improvement over CMS. So this is what a G1 uh, memory looks like. It uh, divides everything in, into regions and <laughs> dynamically can assign a, a zone, a, a type of collection to each region. So for in, my, in my example, I have like Three Eden, remember E is for Eden, O is for all generation, and S is for survivors. So the G1 assigns dynamically uh, one type of collection or another to these regions. And it has uh, four phases. First, collects the young generation. So if we have like this, sorry. Uh, it, it now has to make a, a young generation collection. So we pick the Eden spot and create a new survival region, compacted. That's the, the main trick they, that they did. Then, also, it's concurrent. So while your program is running, it will find the areas with more garbage and will mark them to remove them later. And when once uh, there are several areas and these areas uh, are more than a percentage of the memory available, when it 
it's going to make a, a jump collection, it's going to do an off collection as well. So here is where it gains a lot of efficiency because it's doing the, uh, two things at the same time. So, yeah. And the problem is the same problem as before. You can have an evacuation failure. So in some instances, your memory is just fill up because even, even if you are trying to uh, uh, compact, it's compact inside a, a, a region, inside the garbage collector. But across uh, regions, it can be very fragmented. So eventually, you will have a, a failure. And again, stop the world and take my garbage, OK? <laughs> so all the GCs have some kind of uh, full GC, stop the world. Yeah, and that's a problem. There are some other, there is uh, a product uh, by Azul uh, uh, that they have a GC that is not a stop the world, but it's a commercial product, so yeah, <laughs> we have what we have. Okay, another problem with the G1 is that uh, what they call Umongo's objects. This horrible word I didn't make up, it's uh, part of the documentation. So you have to be careful with the huge objects. So if an object, a memory of the memory of an object is more than 50% of the uh, space you have for a region, it's uh, defined, it's classified as a humongous object. And we have a special region for those for these objects. The problem with these objects is that they are not moved because there are very few, they try to minimize the humongous regions and they are not moved. So more fragmentation, okay? Uh, so if you are using G1, well, I'm going to go after one, you should use one or another, but uh, as a rule of thumb, try to use G1 when you are using uh, large heaps because as we, <coughs> well, I'm going ahead of myself. I'm going back uh, to this afterwards. Okay, humongous region. It's, as you can see, it takes several regions and defines a humongous region. It's quite straightforward. So, the region size, usually it's around the size between 2,000, okay? And the humongous threshold is half the region size. So, as I was saying, if your heap is a small, uh, every object can become a humongous uh, object. So, be careful if you, I mean, the problem with garbage collection is that it's not uh, easy to have only one type. Depends a lot of your pro in, in your program. But, uh, you have to take into account these kind of things. If you are only using, I don't know, 100, megabytes of memory, it's not recommended to use uh, G1. So, CMS versus G1. Okay, so, concurrent mark sweep uh, tries, both of them try to minimize the latency, the, the stop the world, but G1 <coughs> further, furthermore tries to minimize the number of the stop the world. It's not just the duration, it's the number. So CMS has a better throughput than the G1, but worse throughput than the parallel garbage collector. Uh, and G1 has bet la better latency. Uh, so CM CMS is better for small heaps. G1 is better for large heaps. And um, uh, CMS uh, fragments the memory. And G1 tries to compact on the, uh, while it's running. Okay. So, uh, bottom line, G1 is going to be the default uh, garbage collection collector in the Gemini. You have to be uh, you have to take that into account, and it's defined as the long-term replacement for the CMS. So they are not going to remove the CMS; it's going to be there. But I think they are going to try to move people uh, to G1 because it's uh, more advanced. It's it has a lot of uh, research 
and I mean uh, hips are only getting uh, larger and larger. They are not getting smaller, so it's a normal thing to just invest in G1. And I mean, if you want throughput, parallel GC is still better. Okay, uh, now I'm going to talk about uh, GBN configurations to, to, for, for garbage collection. I hope you stay with me. <laughs> okay, the first thing, there is no silver bullet. Okay, it's, uh, I mean, it's very typical to say this, but there is no one configuration to rule them, them all. Okay, you have to be very careful when you are touching these things because it's very easy to mess up. So, for example, if you have a big hip, you have very long, you will have a long, very long uh, stop the world process. While if you have a small hip, you will have uh, lots of small process. The easier configuration is just to say the size of the garbage, the size of the heap, and just let uh, the JVM do its thing. I mean, <laughs> they have uh, uh, very good defaults, I think, but for, s well, of course, you can choose the, the algorithm, you want the, the type of garbage collection you want. So, as you can see here, this has the, uh, these are the flags to pass to the JVM to choose one on or another. Uh, serial, parallel, CMS, and G1. Uh, I will put the slides available afterwards, uh, so you can you don't need to put, copy them. Okay, but how do you know which one are you using? That's the first thing, no? Uh, this line at the top, you can see what are your. You, this will return something around these lines. Uh, this is just telling the, the JVM, tell me your defaults, okay? And as you can see, I executed this in a Linux. Uh, I was I, it's, it's using uh, parallel GC. Of course, if using Docker, you run this in, in Java 9. It's, this is just running uh, Java 9 inside a Docker. You can see they are using uh, G1. Okay, but uh, before before tuning before tuning the GC and the in the and the JVN, what are the things we, we have to think about? The first thing is not to do it. Okay, it's better not to touch anything that uh, touching something that you don't know about. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, what you want to do is try to maximize jump collection. Okay, because it's so fast. I mean. Um, so I have afterwards a, a log. Uh, it, it's uh, around mi microseconds or milliseconds per jump generation collection, and the order of magnitude is ten times or, or, or more. Say so. Maybe you have a off collection of two seconds and a jump collection of 0 0.02 seconds. Okay. Also, you want to minimize the stop the world. So um, avoid large objects because uh, large objects are the ones that are, are going to make the GC fail in terms of fragmentation. I mean, if you have very a lot of spaces if, and you have very large objects, those large objects are not going to fit into the spaces. So this is what causes the the failure. <coughs> And minimize object retention because uh, they're, they're can, they can cause memory leaks. And of course, gather data, gather data. So this is the most important thing of the talk. <laughs> if you want to measure uh, what's happening with your uh, garbage collection, just you can just activate the logs, the GC logs. Um, you will have something like this. This is a uh, Parallel uh, garbage collector. Uh, you can see here is doing uh, a jump generation, a full GC. <coughs> well, I, I, this is a. I mean, this is the easier one. The G1 and the CMS are much more complicated, so that's why I always show you the parallel. <laughs> okay, another tool we have is the J console. 
the J console goes with uh, the default J, uh, Open JDK. So you have this here at the bottom. You can see that uh, measures the the usage of the of the heap. You have the the JAM collect the JAM uh, memory. Sorry, the JAM region, the JAM survivors, and the, uh, and the off region. And there is some summary. This is out of the box. So also you can use J Visual VM with a plugin. It's called Visual GC plugin. Uh, the J Visual VM you have to install a bar, but I think in Mac OS it goes with the uh, distribution of the JDK. So if you are using Mac OS, you have it already. And uh, looks like it. Like this. this is very nice. I think it's based on NetBeans or something because the look and feel is almost the same. And you can see uh, where is your memory going in terms of classes and instances. And this is very cool. This is the plugin, the Visual GC. You can see an Instagram or where it's happening with your memory. And this is really cool. You can take a lot of information. This is, of course, this is real time. So while your uh, program is running, you are going to see this happening. Um, <coughs> there is also JDFCAP that it's a specialist tool to uh, detect problems with the, with the garbage collector. Okay? This is made by the guys in a sold system and they, they are a specialist in a postless garbage collector so I think they made this to uh, show up their, how good is their garbage collector so it's a pretty cool tool. Okay. <coughs> But again, talking about uh, JVM options. These two options are the easiest uh, to pass to the JVM, okay? Uh, they are called ergonomics. And that's, this means that if you uh, give the JVM these options, it, it's going to try to meet this, this, this objective, right? okay? But uh, it's not guaranteed. Is going to do his best, its best. So that's why I said before that uh, G1 was more uh, predictable because it does a better job using this ergonomics. For example, in CMS, you can tell it whatever you want, that it's going to um, <laughs> do what he wants, and you can <coughs> be very specific. But G1 works better with these options, okay? Um, yeah, um, this is. Sorry, this is the this is to limit the the, the pause of the stop the world, and this is to, <coughs> to say to the JVM the right ratio between uh, garbage collection um, and your application. I mean, it's latency and throughput again. It's that simple <laughs> and that complicated. <laughs> And yeah, you can also change the size of the generations, the regions in the heap. You can tell if you want to change the, the new, the jump generation ratio, the survivors ratio, the max uh, new, uh, I mean, the jump generation size, and how long uh, a jump uh, object, a jump object can be in the jump space before going to the off, uh, or the survivor space can before going to the off space. And well, you have also options for the G1, but yeah, I'm not going to go deep into this because I want to conclude. You have many more. There is a command here, uh, print flux final, that will show you every option inside the, every value, every flag, uh, in the JVM, okay? Uh, well, I just did a grab with the prefix G1 to show you uh, a, an example of the flags you will see. There is a lot of options. Okay, so con concluding, uh, we have seen these four aspects. I hope that now at least you can understand this quote from InfoQ. So I I'm going to go through it uh, with the Concurrent Mark and Suite GC, the full collection is serial and stop the world. Hence, your application threads are stopped for the entire duration while the heap space is reclaimed 
and then compact. The duration for the stop the world goes depends on your hip size and the survi surviving objects. So if you understand this now, I'm happy. <laughs> so please don't be afraid of the big bad world. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. Muchas gracias.